Hey bitches, it's Merrick, and today on the menu is Jollibee. Now, if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Merrick. Nice to meet you. I film mukbang and ASMR, so if you are interested in these types of videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel. This is part three of my Jollibee series. I'll link my other Jollibee videos on the screen right now if you're interested in checking those out. But without further ado, let's get started. As you can tell by the title, I went to Jollibee and got myself one Aloha Yum Burger. I'll show you guys in one second, but before we get to that, I just want to show you Jollibee's packaging. This is a Jollibee's bag. It's kind of transparent. By kind of transparent, I mean it is transparent. Or I guess it's not like fully transparent. It's like more translucent. There's the Jollibee logo in the front and it just says Jollibee down here. And I bought a combo so it came with some fries and then also a fountain drink. These are the Jollibee fries right here. Just gonna snack on one real quick. Mm. And then this is the Aloha Yum. So packaging wise, um, it says deliciously satisfying yum. And then this also says or says deliciously satisfying as well. And on the back it says be responsible Remember to recycle, ladies and gentlemen. Inside the box. Oh, by the way, um, it says Aloha Yum right here. And then this one says Big Yum. So I think um, those are their two main burgers at the Jollibee I went to. But yeah, I got the Aloha Yum because it looked a lot prettier on the screen. And here we go. The moment we have all been waiting for. The Aloha Yum in all its glory. Take a look. I actually wrote down a sheet of notes. I went online to find out the specific ingredients of the Aloha Yum because when I looked on the menu, they actually didn't state the ingredients. So I wanted to like make sure I had my facts right for everyone. Inside the Aloha Yum, we have one third pound of 100% pure beef patty, pineapple bacon, honey mustard dressing, cheese, lettuce, all between a sesame bun. Yummy. So I'm pretty sure they weren't lying. I see the cheese. You guys see the cheese? Cheese is here. Bacon is right here. The patty, of course. Um, and then I think I see the sauce. The yellow is the honey mustard sauce. Sorry, I'm trying to like angle my hand weirdly. So there we go. We got the honey mustard sauce, lettuce, and yeah, basically the sesame patty on top. So without further ado, I'm going to take my first bite. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god. Mmm. That's good. I usually don't like mustard, but I like it in the Aloha Yum Burger. I like it um, as uh, honey mustard, I think. Just pure mustard is like too much for me. Mm. Want to bite everyone? Here, open wide. Ready, set. Mmm, yummy. This is really good. Here's a better view of the pineapple. Oh yeah, you can definitely see the pineapple in the shot. Like, do you see the big yellow ring of goodness? Big yellow ring of sweetness? Mmm. Let me try some of the fries. Mmm. The fries are pretty ordinary, not gonna lie. There's nothing too special about fries. I feel like with fries, it's hard to wow me or wow the average person. Cause like most fries take, taste alike. 
there's really, like, not that much separation between, like, a really, really good fry and, like, a decent fry and, like, a bad fry, in my opinion. They kind of blur together. Hmm. Uh, for my fountain drink, I got root beer. Ooh, sorry about that. That was like a really loud squeaking noise. Maybe I'll edit that out if it's like too high pitched. Hmm. I feel like I have so many fries, um, relative to, to the burger. Like, I feel like I'll eat all my fries before I finish my burger for some reason. Hmm. <laughs> By the way, since this since this is the Aloha Yum Burger, I decided to wear a floral shirt. Did anybody notice? Like, does anybody get it, first of all? You know how, like, Aloha is from Hawaii, and, like, Hawaii is, like, tropical, and, like, tropical is, like, flowers, and, like, flowers is floral, hence the floral shirt? I love how I just, like, broke down my rationale and logic of my outfit. <laughs> I do kind of plan these things. Today, I want to talk about something. In all my book bonks, I usually have like a theme I talk about, and I'm not sure if this if this is necessary, necessarily a story time. I guess it could be a story time because like technically anything can be a story time as long as like it happened to you in the past and is somewhat interesting to the audience. So, this is going to be another story time video. Get your food, relax, and watch me eat. Or eat along with me. Eat along with me, watch me eat. Just pay attention to the story. I was going to swear there, but I'm trying to swear less on my channel. <laughs> because I do know I have younger viewers. One of my friends commented... She saw in one of my videos, I said the exact same thing. I said, oh, I want to swear less because I have younger viewers on my channel. And she laughed at me because the f second word in all my videos is a swear, technically. Because bitches is a swear. Well, technically not because I could just be referring to you guys as like dogs, right? Because bitch is a type of dog or bitch is a female dog, I think. Hmm. Anyhow, back to the story time. Ooh, by the way, I feel so rude. I did not offer you guys a fry. There you go. Like, how dare I? God, Merrick. Where are your manners? What did your parents teach you for 24 years? Since I am currently in a hotel room, that reminded me of a situation that happened to me in the past that involved a hotel room. No, it is not a grinder hookup for anybody that's wondering. It's nothing sexual at all, but it happened with a friend, and no, I did not sleep with this friend. Um, so yeah, that's what I want to talk about today. A situation that involved a hotel room. That's going to be my story time theme. Mm. Oh man, I should have bought two Aloha Yum Burgers. Mm. Mm. I just took a bite of the pineapple. So good. Also, um, the beef patty, I'm pretty sure it's not frozen. Which is a good thing, 
if people are wondering, because, like, frozen patties are, like, not high-quality patties. Frozen anything is not high-quality, I feel like, ex except for ice cream. Except for ice cream. Um, yes. Going on my story time. Honestly, it's, like, like, if I was having dinner with a friend, I could probably explain this story in, like, 20 seconds. But I feel like I elongate or lengthen my stories on camera. Because it's like I take a bite of food and like a couple of seconds pass by and like I think of something else. My tr train of thought goes somewhere else and by the time I get back to my story time, it has been a whole five minutes. <laughs> but I should really get started on my story time. If you're new to my channel and if you're wondering why I'm always looking off to the side, it's because my laptop is connected to my camera. So I'm seeing what you guys are seeing right now to make sure that everything looks okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what these hand gestures are. I'm trying to like show you guys my area. This is my area. Do not F with me. If you step one foot in the zone, bitch is going to get cut. Was that th threatening? <laughs> Did it sound threatening at all? I feel like I am just not a threatening person. Like, this face, this, like, derpy face will never be a threat to anybody. Like, I'm not even lying here. A 13-year-old boy can beat me up. Like, for sure, hands down. Like, I feel like an 8-year-old girl can beat me up. Like, I would just lose. If we were in the Hunger Games, and it was me against an 8-year-old girl against a 13-year-old guy, I would be the first one out. Actually, no. Oh my gosh, I'm totally getting so sidetracked from my story story time, but that's okay. Um, actually, no. I don't think I would be the first one out. Just because I am, I admit this, even though it's something bad I shouldn't be admitting on camera, I am a very manip manipulative person. So I always not only think two steps ahead, but ten steps ahead. So somehow, I can gain that guy's trust and that girl's trust and use it to my advantage. <laughs> I love how I just went on, like, went on talking for two minutes about this hypothetical situation. <laughs> okay. This story time occurred in university. It occurred in university, university between me and one of my ex-close friends. Yes, you heard the word ex because in my eyes, we are no longer friends. No, we did not have a big feud. We did not, like, rip each other's hair out. It was just, like, we naturally drifted apart. But some context, uh, university here in Canada and North America is four years. I met her first year. We were, like, kind of, like, we, like, we're acquaintances getting to know each other. We had lots of classes together. Uh, second year, we got really, really tight because, like, literally, we had almost every single class together. So I would see her. We would be like, oh, can you help me with this problem? Oh, when's the test? That kind of thing. And then third year, this is when we kind of drifted apart because we had different courses at this point in time. But, but, but we did see each other once a week. Hold on. I'll get into the actual situation in a second. We are calling this friend. We are going to call this friend. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a good name for her. Sorry, guys. You know what I should do? Since I do story time videos so often, I should just ask you guys for like recommendations of fake names that I'll incorporate the next time I do story times. <laughs> Maybe I can use your name. Her name is going to be Angel. Her name is going to be Angel, okay? And trust me, she is far from an angel. God, if anything, she's the devil. I know, right? So salty. Like, I am so salty about this whole situation. Okay. So, me and Angel... We were drifting apart in third year, but we still saw each other once a week. We saw each other once a week for dinner, caught up, what have you been doing, blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't awkward. 
And then came reading week. If you don't know what reading week is, it's spring break for university students here in Canada. I'm not sure, I think it's called reading week in the US too. I can tell you the story about Angel because, I know she doesn't watch my videos, because she never supported my YouTube channel. Like, I told her so many, like, we, even when we were close friends, and like, oh, you should check out my videos and stuff, like, ah, oh, I spent a lot of time working on them. And even, okay, even if you're genuinely not interested in that type of content I make, wouldn't you still watch a friend's video to support them? I don't know. That's, like... Like, one of my friends, she runs a fashion blog, and I really don't care that much about women's fashion, because she only writes about women's fashion, I just like men's fashion, um, but I still read her blog to support her, so. Anyhow, 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 it was reading week. We, well... It was her idea, yes. This is a key point of the story. This is her idea. We went to school, university, nearby Toronto. So not actually inside Toronto, but like nearby Toronto. And she suggested that we go to Toronto for a reading week to like let loose, relax, you know, take a break from school and studying. I was DTF. I was so DTF. At first, I was um, a bit concerned about the cost because, like, we had to buy like a bus ticket round trip. That's like fifty bucks. We had to like rent a hotel room because we didn't know anyone there. And when you're a poor student, you can't like afford that. Heck, even like even though I'm kind of kind of working, I still can't afford that. So she tells me, oh, let's split a hotel room. And I think the hotel rooms are going for like, oops, that fell off. Oops. <laughs> oops. Oh, why am I dropping this? Why can't I not pick this up and put this in my mouth? Oh, there we go. We found the hotel rooms were going for 140 a night at this point. And we were planning to get two separate beds, like one, two queens and stuff. And a share room for $70 a night. I was totally fine with that. That was within my budget. And we planned this, I would say, two or three weeks in advance. Two or one day before the day of our trip, like the day we left, she tells me that her parents don't feel comfortable with her rooming with another male. And I totally understand that, like... Well, I don't totally understand that. That's a lie. First of all, what I, if I were her, what I would have done in that situation is I would I would have checked with my parents to see if I got their permission before committing to me, because I didn't mind staying with a girl, and I thought she, like I didn't know her parents like kind of she had to get her parents permission, and I know I didn't know that she didn't have her parents permission beforehand and I already bought my bus ticket so her parents don't didn't want her staying in a room with me and her parents like I like I honestly I totally understand I personally wouldn't care if like if I had a daughter or if I had a son for them to like stay in the opposite sex's room I wouldn't care but to each their own right is that the saying? To each their own. I'm not sure. Sometimes when you don't know sayings, just say it with such confidence that no one questions you. This is a saying. The bigger the lie, 
the less people suspect. That's my motto in life. Do not go with like some small lie. People are gonna, people are gonna know when you're lying. Say something so outrageous that no one questions you. Why are you late to work? I had to go. What's a good one? Why are you late to work? I had to go get a urine test, and no one's going to say anything to that. As soon as you say, as soon as you say, I went to go get a urine test, and the doctor examining my urine found something. No one's going to question that. Your boss isn't going to be like, "Oh, can you give me a doctor's note?" Like this is in grade seven, okay? <laughs> so, FYI, if you're going to lie, make it a good lie. We stay in different rooms. At this point, I'm concerned because my budget only allowed me to pay seventy dollars a night per room. And now that we are staying in separate rooms, we were going to double the cost. We are each going to pay one forty. So it was kind of awkward because I had to bring it up to her. I was like, when we first agreed to go on this trip, I agreed to pay seventy dollars a night, and. She was understanding, and her parents were understanding. Like, I don't, I don't want to say she's her parents are rich, but her parents basically paid one forty a night for her room, and then covered half of my room because that's what I agreed to. So I guess it worked out in my favor that I had a one forty room all to myself. Now here is a key point of the story. We were talking about how we were going to go shopping and like do stuff together when we agreed to plan this trip. I'm just gonna put this down. Hmm. We agreed to do stuff together. We got to Toronto. We checked in. We put down our bags. We went out for dinner. We went back to the hotel, and for the rest of the week, we didn't do anything together. Yep, I know we did not do anything together. What happened, Eric? You must be wondering. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. Okay, calm down. <laughs> Do you see this like attitude? It's because I'm still bitter. It's been like four years almost. So this is what happened. Instead of hanging out with me, she spent the entire week in her hotel room studying for exams and doing projects. Like what? I know, right? She is spending one hundred and forty dollars a night, plus seventy dollars a night for my half, so two hundred and ten dollars to do homework and study for exams in her hotel room. I know that's like my reaction too. And it wasn't like I was excluding her. I asked her to do stuff with me. I'm like, oh, let's go for dinner tonight, or let's go for lunch, or let's go shopping this afternoon, or like let's go to this park, or go to this festival. She was just like, no, I'm busy. I have stuff to do. I'm like, what do you mean stuff? Like, you're the one who like thought of this idea. You're the one who asked me. Oh, do you want to come, like, basically party and have a good time in Toronto with me? So yeah, that's the story time. <laughs> that's how it ends. It's just like a better situation. Like, I don't like for me. I understand that you have tests and exams. If you had tests and exams, why don't you just study on campus? Why did you agree? Not agree. Why did you suggest that we go to Toronto and hang out? When you obviously don't have time for that, I don't know. 
I was so confused. Hmm. And the worst part, worst part about it was I had to do basically everything alone. At that point in my life, I was pretty self-conscious about doing things alone, and like I still am, but like a lot of things don't bother me anymore. So like going to dinner alone, going to like fancy restaurants for lunch alone, it made me very self-conscious and awkward. I just didn't want to do it, but. A part of me was like, Mary, you're in Toronto, you're like spending all this money, why not just enjoy yourself and like, go to go try this restaurant? So I did it, I felt very uncomfortable, but I pushed myself to do it anyways. I thought I was going to do it with Angel, but apparently not. I'll give you guys another example. Pineapple. Another example was I wanted to go to this new club that was opening and Angel said she couldn't go. Going to a club alone is like so awkward. <laughs> like it's awkward, trust me. It is awkward AF. And I just had a really bad time at this club since I was alone. It wasn't really fun. You didn't have a wingman, a wing woman to like go meet people with, cause like everyone, everyone is there with their friends usually. <sighs> Think about this, just like it doesn't boil my blood, but I'm just like, oh my god, like I can't believe I went through that. I actually think I'm just going to save the fries for later because I'm pretty full right now actually. I am pretty full right now. Just going to plop it down here. So yeah, that is my story time about Angel. Hmm. I know, it wasn't the most exciting, but I just can't stand it when someone tells you they want to do, some do something with you and don't. I just think that's really inconsiderate of a friend, you know? And maybe that's why we're not friends today. So yeah, that is going to be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for future Jolly Bee mukbangs. I'll link all my past videos on the screen right now. And until next time, that was your daily dose of a hot mess. Bye, bitches.